Hey, I'm Melanie Trailer, and welcome back to the Flossy Quilt Along. We are on a week five. This is the end, our last video for this quilt along. Let me tell you about our sponsors. We have two different sponsors this week, and we're going to have two different winners. Um, each sponsor is offering long arming services for your quilt. To get eligible for these giveaways, you do have to actually enter them. So there's a button in your email where you can enter or just go to southerntrimquilts.com and click the quilting giveaways page and you can uh, enter there. You have until next Thursday at noon and then I'll send around an email and let everyone know who, who has won. But before we get to this week's task and in addition to those prizes, uh, we also have the, these two long arm quilters offering 20 20 and 30 percent discounts i believe uh for long arm and services on flossy so if you don't win the giveaway there's still an opportunity to take advantage of this discount so that you can get your quilt quilted and i just i've used both of these quilters now they're both really really great and i really enjoyed you know choosing uh my my panto design and just sending off my quilt and then getting it back finished it was such a treat so do take advantage of their generous offers Okay, our task is to sew all our blocks together and get a finished quilt top. That's it. I broke this up into two days because it was a lot for one day, <laughs> or I usually sew in my afternoons, so it was a lot for one afternoon. So break it up however you need to. Let's get to the demo. Hey, all right, so last week we talked about layout, how to lay it out, what to think about. If you missed that, you can go back and watch that video on layout. Um, but today we're just going to start sewing our blocks together and there's no wrong way to do this okay you sew these blocks together any way that suits you best um, i've tried a whole bunch of ways but what i like to do is start from the bottom and work my way up so i'm going to start with the bottom row sew those together press it put it here on my table sew the next row together press it and then sew that row to this row that I've already got sitting here. And I'm going to kind of work that way all the way up the top of the quilt. We're going to be using a quarter inch seam allowance. Let me grab these, this bottom row and we'll get started. All right. So one thing I want to say before we go to the sewing machine is that when I'm picking these up from my wall, from the tabletop, from the floor, wherever you're grabbing them from, hold them in the position that you want to sew them in and be mindful about not changing that position so when i'm when i get these off my wall i'm going straight to my sewing machine and i know that this is the accurate position any kind of little distractions i've noticed have get me confused or get me putting them in the wrong direction and then i've got a real big problem on my hand so i'm keeping that just like this i'm being mindful Let's go to the sewing machine. Okay, here we are, and I'm just going to move my blocks to this side. I mean, I tend to like to keep them here. Uh, whatever, definitely whatever works best for you. Um, I also have this part of my desk that pulls out. So if they're really big blocks, I will keep them on that. But this size, I think, is going to be, you know, okay right here. Let's start sewing these together. And we're going to chain piece these. And I'm just going to start pairing them up. So we're putting them together. All right, so we've got some seam, seams here and you can pin these if you wanna pin them or you can kind of place them together like that. And I kind of just hold that first thing together and then reposition for the second one. And I can see those nest up. You see how they bump up and kiss each other, those two seams? That is how you get them to nest. You can really feel it between these two fingers. You can feel them lock in together. And like I said, if, if you're a beginner quilter, you may want to just put a pin right here and a pin on this next one. When you get a little bit more experience, you might be able to just to hold it together the way I do. Or maybe you're feeling confident already and you can do that. But if you feel uncomfortable, you know, just put a pin in it. All right. And then with a quarter inch seam, we're going to sew them together. Still holding it in place and when I stitched on top of it then I can adjust and fix these this one's thing so well, there's only two seams that are gonna match up here so I'm gonna get this one in the right place too and so And 
then I'm going to grab the next two, put them together, and I'm going to do the same thing. All right, put my finger here at this seam to hold it in place. We're just going to keep going with all of these blocks. All right, I've only got one block left, so I'm going to stop there and I'm going to cut these threads and I'm going to stack these very nicely and then open them up so that way I can make sure that they're all in the same place because we did all that work laying these out just so so now I don't want to get them all mixed up right I'm open these first two up and there's my seams look good all right and then we're going to put these two together same thing Okay, clip the thread and then same thing, open this one up, put it over here, and then this other section, open it up, this section going on top of this section, get my seams in the right places. Right, we have our first row, or actually our last row sewn, and let's go and press it. All right, so when I come to this pressing map, I wanna pick the row up in the exact position that it should be in, so that I always have it the beginning of the row and the end of the row in very particular hands, right? But when I press, I kind of shift them. So I'm gonna turn it this way. If you feel more comfortable, pulling it down as you go, do that. Do whatever makes you, works best for you. Just do whatever works best for you. But I'm gonna turn uh, all the seams of one row going in one direction, and all the seams in the other row are gonna go in the opposite direction. So this first row, we're gonna press this way. So away from me. And then I kinda just press these seams one at a time. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna do this. I'm pressing nicely all the seams between the blocks are going to get pressed away from me I like to smooth everything I press with my hands first I just feel like if I push it with the iron something sometimes it has a tendency of warping so I always use my hands first Okay, we're gonna pick my row up and we're gonna take it to the other side of this table. All right, so I like to put my row here and then, you know, keep bringing them on this side and letting it grow. Then I'm gonna grab the next row at the bottom. All right, so same process. I'm gonna sew this row together and I'll see you in a minute. All right, so here again, and this time, I'm going to press the blocks 
towards me. Get them pressed out with my hands first, or smoothed out with my hands, and then press. One of the things you're trying to avoid here is having any kind of lip. So basically that just means that you didn't push the seam out all the way uh, and left a little bit of, of, of a fold here. So you definitely want to watch out for that. If you, if you end up doing that, it can make your row a little too short and make your seams not match up. So it is something you definitely want to watch out for. And part of, you know, making sure that you're, you're pressing accurately. All right, same thing. I'm gonna go to the other side of this table. Okay, so here we are. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to take this row and then just kind of put it in place and then drop it right down on top of our, our first row. And then we're gonna nest these seams. All right, so we're gonna match the seams between each of the blocks to the row before it. And that is just going to look like putting those seams together getting them right in place. So stitch lines are going right together. And then this bottom row seam is going this way. And then this top row seam is going that way. So they kind of just lock on top of each other. You should be able to fill it between your two fingers. And when you have it in place, you're gonna put a, a pin directly into your stitch line. All right, so right there. And I'm going to get this block in place too and pin at the end of the row. And I want to put one pin between them, just like that. Then I just kind of pull this down and continue on, blocking that seam or nesting that seam into place and then putting my pin right in there. And then one pin between the blocks. So, so far, you know, it looks just like that. I'm going to do that all the way down the row. Let me see if I can give you another look at that nesting. Okay, so super up close. And here's my seams. And I'm kind of just putting them right on top of each other. And then making sure I've got it right there. And you can see that seam just kind of Go right in the place. And sometimes if you wiggle like this, you can slide it into place. Sometimes it's not quite right and I have to force it, like, like either pull it a little bit. Having my seams match up is really, really important to me. It might not be important to everybody, but if it's important to you, I want to show you how to do it. Just kind of go just like that. And then I put a pin like that. Get another pin right here and keep going down the length of this row. Just like that. I'm going to finish this. So once I have the whole row pinned, then I just kind of accordion it like this. All right, and then I'm going to take it to the sewing machine. All right, so here we are. I've got a pin cushion to catch these pins, and we are ready to go. So, seam, seam allowance is a quarter inch. And then as I come to these pins, I just pull them out. Put them in my little pin cushion. When I get to one where the seam matters to me, I just kind of get my needle to go over that seam allowance and I pull out my pin right before, so it would be right before I get to that stitch line, but I'm actually, I'm actually not pulling it out until the very last minute, but I don't want to run over my pins. I know that there's quilters who do like running over their pins and that's fine if that's your thing. Um, I don't like to do it. It breaks needles in my opinion, but you know, I just kind of, uh, I want to take it out the last minute because that, that's how I'm keeping 
those points lined up. I think I can actually hear the fact that I need to change my needle. I'm going to wait and go until I finish this row. Here it is again. Let me see if I can get a little bit closer for you. So I'm getting close. I'm watching. Just kind of, I like to slip my finger in there and just kind of push the seam allowance in the right direction because sometimes if you don't do that, it can, you know, get caught up into that foot the wrong way and get folded into weird positions. So I, you know, I'm just being really cautious there. And then right before I get to that stitch, I pull it out. So I'm getting really, really close to that stitch line where they meet up, and then I'm pulling my needle out. I'm going to do it one more time for you. All right, here we go. I'm kind of pulling it out, you know, a little bit already. Pushing that seam down, because if I just let it hit, it'll, it'll do all kinds of crazy things, right? So I want to make it behave. And then, and then now I've, I've caught in the needle the seam allowance, but I want to make sure I'm catching the stitch line before I pull my pin out. So it looks like that. Okay, here it goes. I'm going to do it again without stopping this time. one block here that is just a little off so they're not quite meeting it up. I want to show you what that looks like in case you're experiencing the same stuff. You can see that this block is just a little bit, the block underneath is a little bit bigger than this block. This block right here must be a little short. So I'm still going with the, the longer block as far as watching the edge of my fabric goes. But the seam allowance is going to hide all those tiny little inconsistencies. I'll show it to you again in just a second. All right. Let me show you that little mishap. So you see that this block back here is a little bit bigger than this one. This one's short. But I can still use it. And nobody's going to ever know because that is hidden inside my seam allowance. Um, obviously, if it's too short, you, you're going to have a real problem sewing it. But when it's just a little bit, don't let it stress you out. So we are ready to press these rows. All right. So I have my row ready. But before I open it up, I just want to set these seams. This seam in particular is one that I feel very strongly about setting. If you notice that I didn't set the seams between the blocks when we sewed them into rows, you could have, but I'd usually don't actually do that unless it's a unless it's a block with just a lot going on, like a lot of triangles or something like that. That I think is going to be a struggle for me. These simple, more simple quilts, you can take a little bit of a break on them, but when it comes to between rows, I find everything works out easier and faster if I just take the time to set the seam now. So that's what I'm doing. All right, pull it down this way, and then all of my seams between rows, I'm just going to press away from me. Open it up, all right, and then smooth it with my fingers first. And then take my iron and press. And a lot of my seams come out really really well and then occasionally there's a seam that doesn't so if your points are off they're off or you could redo it whatever whatever you want to do a lot of times when it's not a lot of mistake in it I just let it go sometimes when I pull my my quilt top down the way I'm doing it gets the the seam all wiggled and I have to take an extra minute you know to get it right but 
I don't, I don't want to put all this time in this quilt and then kind of slack at the end with the, those seams because usually I'm the one quilting my own quilts and when those seams get, you know, uh, twisted and then you press on them and then they're just, it becomes this big clump in your quilt, which could break my needle, you know, when I'm quilting, quilting it later. So just want to do everything right, set myself up for success. Now I'm going to pick up my top and bring it over here. And we're going to start this whole thing over again with the, with the next rows. So now I'm going to go grab the next row. All right, so just like that, I'm going to sew these together. Then I'll put this one here after I've done sewing and pressing it. I'll grab the next one, do the same thing. Sew this, that row and this row together, then sew them both to these two rows. And I'll work myself all the way up to the quilt top. So I'm going to finish this on my own time. I will see you when I have the quilt done. I broke it up into two days, but I did get finished. I think I had one row where I accidentally pressed everything the wrong way. So I had to go back and fix that. But other than that, I had no complications. Most of my seams are matching up pretty well. Let me get you a bigger view. I am really loving it. And when I think about comparing it to my original flossy quilt, that one had very saturated prints used as my darks and, you know, low volumes and whites used as my lights. So that one definitely had a more, more of a, a, a stronger visual for how the pattern looks. On this one, I've added a bunch of low volumes to my darks along with some saturated prints. And I feel like it just made it a lot more, you know, light and airy, gave more space. I feel like it looks a lot more scrappier than my original version. I love both. Uh, again, I just feel that this is just a great, super fast, easy pattern to really eliminate some of your stash. So I think it really does what it was intended for. All right, we are at the end of this quilt along. This is the last post for the quilt along. If you stay signed up for the email, I'm going to send around an email later after the giveaway and we're going to talk about finishing these up. And I, I have intentions of finishing this up um, on camera so that you can see. I think I'm going to, you know, quilt it myself, of course, and do a all over design. So I might actually um, do a little demo for what I plan to do. And we still have one more quilt in the book to complete. So if you're here for the long haul, a uh, tangle quilt is coming up and I'm not going to have as much of a gap between this one and some of the others we did this year. So I probably will, f I feel like I'm going to start tangle mid-October to end October. So just that way we can get it completed before the holidays pop in. So yeah, I hope you're going to join in for tangle too, because that one is very similar to this one, um, except it's just... I feel like it's a little bit more versatile, so you have more room to make it your own. Anyway, uh, don't forget to enter the giveaway. Thanks for joining in. I've had so much fun. I've enjoyed getting to meet a lot of new people this time. And of course, I'm enjoying all of you usuals. It's been so great to hear from you. And um, let me know how you liked Flossy Pattern, how you liked the quilt along. I love hearing from you. I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.